The defense attorney for William Roddy Bryan has taken the spotlight several times during trial after making some controversial comments. Kevin Goff faces criticisms for complaining that the jury didn't have enough Bubba's or Joe Six Packs on it and for trying to have high profile African Americans thrown out of the courtroom. Take a listen. He's basically inviting jurors to just like Dorothy. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place by home. We're indoctrinating jurors to say, I can be fair. I can be fair. I can be fair. What at first looks when we all come in the courthouse on Monday morning, like a very innocent attempt by a civil rights group to promote voting rights turns out to be something much different. The court does not find that the uh, movement has met its burden uh, to limit the First Amendment rights of any individuals that um, may come to the courthouse grounds, which is a public place. In this case, it would appear that white males born in the South over 40 years of age without a four-year college degree, uh, sometimes euphemistically known as Bubba or Joe Sixpack, seem to be significantly underrepresented. I can't say underrepresented in the entire panel of jurors because the race information on the master list is obviously not inaccurate. Here's a real question in this case. Whether that demographic is underrepresented in this jury pool. And if it is, then we have a problem with it. One issue is we renew our objection for service for the record to proceeding on Veterans Day. Compelling jurors to serve. Uh, on this federal holiday, uh, we would contend is a violation of the jurors' rights. Whether they have formally filed objections or not, we don't know whether they know. They can tell the court if they have an issue, like if they have daycare, but it takes on a different kind of context. We maintain that it is illegal. Again, uh, I believe I've already addressed that. We're here. The right Reverend Al Sharpton managed to find his way into the back of the courtroom. I'm guessing he was somehow there at the invitation of the victim's family in this case. And I have nothing personally against Mr. Sharp, but my concern is that it's one thing for the family to be present. It's another thing to ask for the lawyers to be present. But if we're going to start a precedent starting yesterday, we're going to bring high-profile members of the African-American community into the courtroom to sit with the family during the trial in the presence of the jury. I believe that's intimidating, and it's an attempt to pressure, could be consciously or unconsciously, an attempt to, to pressure or influence the jury. So I'm not going to blanketly exclude members of the public from this courtroom. Um, if individuals, based on the limitations that we have in the courtroom, um, end up sitting in the courtroom and they can do so, respectful of the court's process and in compliance with this court's orders with regard to the conduct of the trial, and they're not a distraction, then I'm not going to do anything about it. How many pastors does the Arbery family have? Um, we had the Reverend Al Sharpton here earlier, uh, last week, and I'm not keeping track, and I think the court has indicated the court doesn't intend to ask anyone to keep track of who was in the gallery, but I don't know who Mr. Reverend Jackson is pastoring here. We are concerned about whether it's conscious or unconscious, the impact of their presence with respect to the jury and with respect to the proceedings in this case. And I guess the next question is, which pastor is next? Is Raphael Warnock going to make it be the next person appearing this afternoon? We don't know. Mr. Goff, at this point, I'm not exactly sure what you're doing. Uh, I have already ruled on this court's position with regard to the gallery court's position hasn't changed. Uh, at this point, it's almost as if you're just trying to continue this um, uh, for purposes other than just bringing it to the court's attention. And I find that objectionable from the court standpoint. I have said over and over and over in this trial that I am attempting to ensure that in this courtroom, that the defendants receive a fair trial, and I will continue to do that. I have heard the objection. I have ruled previously on my position with regard to the gallery, and that is unchanged. Still with us, Cannon Kearney is in New York and Lawrence Zimmerman in Atlanta. Cannon, the um, 
Kevin Goff's a doozy. Um, he, um, your thoughts overall on, I mean, he's advocating for his client. Um, your thoughts overall on, on this trial and, and um, his actions. Overall, I would say that um, Mr. Bryan's attorney is doing his job to advocate for his client. However, I do believe that in a sense, he may be also prejudiced. He may have also prejudiced his client as well. The judge clearly is doing his best not to be offended or to get loud or to scream at um, <laughs> Mr. Bryan's attorney. However, it just seems that due to the fact that he has his goals in order to represent his client as best as he can see, he doesn't understand that in a way he is pushing the very people who are going to assist him in making the decision to acquit his client um, in the wrong direction. So you never want to get the judge upset. You never want to get the jury upset. You never want them to look at you in a manner of, you're doing things that have nothing to do with the courtroom. Um, just as the prosecution is able to speak on race, I do think that it is fair for the Bryan's attorney to also speak on race. But at a certain point, it just seems as if you're doing nothing more than publicizing for the next case or trying to get clients in um, to come to you. So I do believe that he's uh, did not assist his client, but I do believe he assisted his career. Lawrence, his concern about what was going on even in the courtroom with people coming in, high-profile people coming in, he believes it was going to possibly taint the jury. Um, your thoughts on his thought process, the way he went around it, and to Cannon's point, the fact that Judge Wamsley never raised his voice. He just was very calm and cool, even though you could see the smoke maybe. Um, coming from his ears. Well, what I'm about to say, and I'll tell Kevin to his face if I see him in and around uh, Georgia sometime in the near future, it's foolish. You should focus on his case and fight for Roddy Bryan. He's an advocate, but he's advocating, and you can see Frank Hoke's face for stuff that doesn't even make sense. And I see Kevin on all these different television networks, including your own, talking about U.S. Supreme Court case law he's relying on to bar people from being in a courtroom. Presley versus Georgia, United States Supreme Court case says courtrooms must be open to the public. Secondly, pastors aren't just coming into the court. You, you don't have like 50 pastors wearing uniforms filing into the courtroom as some intimidation tactic because Kevin keeps talking about this analogy. If police officers came in, in uniform in a case where a police officer was killed or, you know, or, or, you know, for the, the defendant was on trial, that would be prejudicial. Well, that's not happening here. Jesse Jackson's coming in dressed as a normal person, Al Sharpton is coming in. They're part, of, they're part of the public. doesn't mean it's who comes in. They're not coming in force, sitting in the back of the jury or in front of the jury gallery and acting menacingly. They're just there. So his analogy is way off base. It absolutely makes no sense to me. Yeah. And, you know, he made some references to Colonel Sanders as well. So there's little racial issues there also. So I don't know what he's doing. And it, and it is offensive, and it's darn right silly because it's not helping his client. Mm. And like Cannon says, it's like he's advocating for more clients. He can't get out of the limelight. We need to take a break. Top of the hour. Thank you both. Have a great Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, Julie Grant will be next. We'll check in with Julia Janae as well. This is Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Stay with us.